Today on This Week in Iowa, a runoff election for Des Moines mayor. We talk to the incumbent, then we analyze the rest of the big local races, plus the largest political event before the Iowa caucus, the Liberty and Justice Celebration. We break down the biggest takeaways from the event. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. I'm Sabrina Ahmed, and we begin this show breaking down election night. Des Moines mayoral race heading to a runoff between incumbent Frank County and challenger Jack Hatch. Neither County nor Hatch were able to reach a total of more than 50% plus one vote Tuesday night. County and Hatch with 43.28 and 42.67% respectively. Also on the ballot, uh, Chase Holm had about 8%. Joe Grandinet got about 5% of the votes, but neither will be included in the runoff. It is just now between the top two. Joining me tonight with some reaction from election night and also how to move forward is the current mayor of Des Moines, Frank County, longest serving mayor in the city's history. Thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for asking. Us. Okay. Mr. Mayor, what was your reaction? Well, we knew it was going to be a tough race, and uh, we had four candidates in there, and uh, you know, a, a late entry, and and uh, but a lot of money spent and uh, out on media and everything else. So, it uh, we knew it was going to be good, but we stayed uh, positive. We wanted everybody to know what we're doing and who we are, and uh, we continued to to put a message out. We're lifting up the city. We have a a plan to fix the roads fix the neighborhoods, lift them up, and lower property taxes, which we've already done. And uh, uh, we think that's a positive message and, and one that uh, needs to be carried forward. Now, this isn't your first time in a runoff, but it's been a few years. True. <laughs> so uh, what do you do from here until December 3rd? Well, you've got to just keep the momentum going. You've got to get out. We're going to keep... Uh, engaging with uh, all of our supporters. We're going to keep knocking doors and, and meeting and greeting and seeing what people care about. I mean, that's what I do all the time. Uh, and it's, I really enjoy it because that's how we made this city what it was. I remember when we started, you know, we were having an argument over getting the lights back on. And now we've achieved that. Uh, the city is growing. It's great. And, but w we haven't done it, not by myself. It's working with businesses, working with neighborhoods. What makes Des Moines a great place to want to live, to work, to raise a family, and how do we all work together to create it? And it's been a lot of fun doing it, and we, we look forward to continuing that. Now, of the people who did not vote for you, that would, if all of those votes were to go together, that would win. So mm -hmm. uh, what is your reaction to knowing that so many people would not have continued to have you as the mayor? Well, I think we need to keep getting our message out because I think there's there's a lot of folks that, uh, you know, have watched social media that have done stuff uh, and engaged or at least listened to, to certain messages. We need to get our message out and let people know what's really happening out there, how much money we're putting into to neighborhoods, into roads. I mean, we're going to put $300 million into redoing streets. We've improved the uh, the work on potholes, for instance, from 6,000 to 16,000, mm -hmm. uh, because we're getting that feedback from our our constituents. We know what they want. We're responding to it, and uh, but we need to get that message out because clearly there's a lot of people that uh, haven't engaged and uh, haven't uh, spent as much time uh, in our neighborhoods to to give us that reaction. We need to know that, and they need to know that I'm out there all the time. We're working for them. We want to know what they need, and uh, we're going to try to deliver. And that's what we did with the local option sales tax, and uh, we are delivering. We're fixing streets. We're fixing neighborhoods. We're lowering property taxes. We're making Des Moines a better place. Now, a lot of the things that you mentioned were things that cost money, but then you just at the very end mentioned lowering property taxes, and that's a complaint I hear a lot from people who live in the city of Des Moines is our taxes are just so high. Mm -hmm. So what can be done about that? Well, you know, it's kind of a formula. So you, we said that we we're going to lower our levy. Mm -hmm. So 60 cents, which will make our levy as low as it's been in almost eight years. And so uh, we wanted to achieve that. We did that uh, and voted that in. And so we've lowered that, that 60 cents immediately. I'm going to uh, push to uh, have our city manager bring back a, a budget this year that lowers it even further. I'm hopeful that we can do, I'm going to give them directive to bring us back a budget that lowers it another 30 to 50 cents. But 
we don't control the assessments. And so that's a comparative on, on home sales and values in neighborhoods. And uh, some of our neighborhoods are prospering, and so those folks are seeing their values go up. Um, you know, we also want to support all the other neighborhoods and get their values in their properties. I mean, because that's, you know, it, as you look at life, that's one of the biggest investments and uh, biggest opportunities for people to have some equity in, in life, not just in their bank account, but in the value of their homes. And a place to put their head at night. That's exactly right. Mayor County, thank you so much. We will continue to follow your race, and we'll look forward to December 3rd. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. We'll take a short break, but coming up next, we sit down with our analysts to discuss this race and other major races from election night. They call it the final for a reason. Last dance in the stands. Last chance to show out. A bar raised by champions. At the top of our game. Only one Karaz above. Seattle Sounders FC. Toronto FC. Watch the 2019 MLS Cup. Today on ABC. Crossroads Shooting Sports is Central Iowa's premier indoor shooting range. Our state-of-the-art retail shop is an authorized dealer that has everything you need for concealed carry, home defense, and personal protection with over 200 guns in stock. Crossroads Shooting Sports, where responsibility and skill meet. The Dish Voice Remote just got even more powerful. Uh, Why'd we put so much technology in there? You don't think I've watched a lot of football? You want to put a little wager on it? Bet. So you can settle that bet without ever taking your eyes off the game. How many D1 football teams are there? Oh! What you do with that power? Oh, it's gotta hurt. Well, that Woo, is right. totally up to you. Don't look so sad, man. Come on, we're having fun. New Dish Voice Remote with the Google Assistant. Dish, tuned in to you. Now you can get real health care for as little as $6 a day. Yes, yeah, save over 50% on your current monthly health care payments. Our plans are perfect for people that are self-employed, don't get health benefits where they work, or just want to pay less for their current health care coverage. And coverage is guaranteed regardless of your medical condition. Save up to 50% on your family's health care benefits. Call right now for a free health care quote starting at just $6 a day. Crossroads Shooting Sports is Central Iowa's premier indoor shooting range. We feature a state-of-the-art retail shop, including full-service conference and training facilities. Our certified staff takes your safety, security, and education seriously. Crossroads Shooting Sports, where responsibility and skill meet. From the capital city, you're watching This Week in Iowa with Sabrina Ahmed, getting to the heart of what's happening in Iowa politics. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined now by Pat Reinard with the Iowa Starting Line and Wes Enos, who's a former Polk County GOP chairman, but also a Bondurant City Councilman. Both of you, thank you so much for being here. Yes, Breaking you. down the local election that just happened on Tuesday night. So, um, first of all, I want to get into your biggest takeaways, but can you react to the Des Moines mayoral race and also the city council races within Des Moines that are going to a runoff? Were you surprised by that? And what do you think that means for uh, the big city of Des Moines? Sure. I mean, I was, I was texting my friends all throughout the night once I started seeing uh, the returns come back from the Des Moines mayoral race and seeing that <laughs> Jack Hatch was in the lead for a good chunk of the night. Uh, Mayor County ended up being up a little bit uh, after that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's in headed towards a runoff. I think there are a lot of people who did not think that Hatch was going to come that close or push it to that. Uh, so it's quite the surprise for someone like County who has been the mayor for so long. See, and I, I take a little bit of a different uh, take on that. You know, you've got Jack Hatch and you've got Frank County, who've both got very large names in Des Moines. They have very large donor networks, and they had the capability to really go head to head another very effectively. You also had two other candidates in there who were going to divide up the race. So somebody not getting to 50% yes. seemed almost going to happen. I mean, the question was who was going to finish on top and who was going to finish second. So. And it was by. It wasn't by a yeah, lot of votes. They both had 43% yeah. once you start right. to, once you round up or round yeah. down. Right. Um, okay, so what were your other big takeaways? Well, actually, first, do you think that a runoff is a good idea? I think a runoff is a great idea. I think when you give people an opportunity to get a 50% majority, that means somebody's got a mandate. It means that more than 50% of people actually wanted one candidate, and you're not stuck with a candidate because there were other candidates in the race, and somebody wins with 15% of the vote, and certainly no mandate. 
it makes it a little more complicated in some of these city council mm -hmm. races where you've got you know six or seven people running and you're voting for three but it, it works out <laughs> okay um, now what were your other big takeaways from the night what were the themes you saw across the state of Iowa and around the metro sure I mean I'll get started I mean as are on the Republican side it's interesting that we saw a an engagement of both parties in this election cycle we've never seen that before um, as we look at some of the races that were most important and most interesting in the area uh, we saw Democrats and Republicans really putting money into races for the first time ever in fact I wasn't even certain that was legal <laughs> until we checked with the state and found out that it actually is legal but these are supposed to be nonpartisan races they, they are but by most intents and purposes we kind of know the backgrounds of a lot mm -hmm. of people who are running and then a lot of the policies that they then talk about and push on the city council or school boards sometimes match some of those partisan backgrounds that they may have obviously you know local stuff it's not as you know ideological driven the the issues that they're dealing with on city councils but some of that does get in there a little bit it can I think realistically the big the big fear that I have more than anything as a city councilman as well you know we do very well in Bondurant we've got Democrats on that board uh, and Republicans on that board uh, when Brian Losey left the Bondurant City Council to serve in the legislature we actually appointed a Democrat to fill his role and he's the one that recruited her Thanks. she's been a phenomenal addition to our group so it's it's concerning to me that we might actually bring partisan vitriol into our councils which are really there to help people get variances to build fences build pools build a shed in the backyard so it gets kind of concerning that you might run into that kind of gridlock and nastiness uh, at a county level at a, at a city level uh, school boards though we've had some issues over the years of whether or not it's uh, fair contracts for teachers mm -hmm. and uh, definitely kind of your background and your uh, ideologies on that can have a big difference absolutely but do you think that the kind of the climate that's happening across the country is playing into making these races more partisan? I mean, part of, I think, what happened here, especially in Polk County, where the Polk County Democrats engaged in a big way this year, and th they will certainly tell you, well, hey, all these <laughs> Republicans uh, ended up endorsing all these Republicans, and so it's, you know, even though it's not said quite as, as blatantly, like that's kind of what's happening behind the scenes. But, you know, the Polk County Democrats engaged um, in these races in a big way because they see, especially in these suburbs, that things are moving to the left, that, uh, and, and and so there was an opportunity there to try and elect more uh, people with Democratic backgrounds to some of these races, and, that, and that's what they did. They flipped, I think it was 13 seats throughout Polk County, mostly centered in the suburbs from a, they, they, someone with a Republican background to a Democratic background. That's actually, I think, inaccurate. I think they won 13 seats. But if you actually look at the seats that they won, uh, you look at Johnston. They took two out of three yeah. uh, seats in Johnston. But John Temple, who was one of the retiring members of Johnston, was a Democrat, registered Democrat. Mm. Uh, the same thing happens in, in Ankeny, where you have Jim McKenna, who'd been on the, the Ankeny City Council for a long time, also a registered Democrat. So he'll be replaced by a Democrat. So in a lot of cases, you have Democrats leaving the board, new Democrats being elected. Now, they did pick up a net gain yeah, of three in Johnston and Grimes. Or not right, Johnston, uh, Johnston and Urbandale. Urbandale yeah. So Urbandale, there were three retiring Republicans, and two Democrats took, three of those, uh, took two of the three seats. Mm. So... I don't think it was quite 13. Now, if you, look, if you had school boards in there, that's very possible. That, yeah, that, that was where some of them were at. We are very bad on the Republican side about recruiting and training people uh, in school board races. It's just not something that a lot of our candidates get into. Now, to, at, a, at a city level, it was a, it was a smaller number, I think. And, and part of the big reason why some of these parties, I think, engage more in these races, because uh, especially for some of these larger races, like state legislature um, and here in the Des Moines metro, those can end up you know, determining control of the state house. A lot of times it's people who are city council mm -hmm. members who then step up to run. Yeah, they can absolutely move up. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you very much for the conversation. Pat's going to stick around. In a couple minutes, we're going to talk about the LJ dinner that happened last week. So stick sure. with us, everyone. It was the biggest night in politics before the Iowa caucus. The Democrats trying to set themselves apart. Our highlights are next. No matter what you do, you're always raising the bar. Delaro fungicide for corn and soybeans can help you get the edge you're looking for. Delaro has a broader spectrum of disease control and best-in-class dual mode of action residual. Plus, it improves plant health, so your top-performing hybrids and varieties will have the protection they need to help you achieve your personal best yields. Delaro fungicide from Bayer. Keep raising the bar. Whether you're tuning up your truck or tuning into the game, get everything you need at Fleet Farm. This week, get great deals on things like Supreme Power Automotive Batteries. $10 off our low fleet price. Fleet Farm Walnuts, one pound, $4.99. And Diamond Natural.
Angel's Large Bag Dog Food. $3 off our low fleet price. Plus, get four cents off each gallon of gas at your local Fleet Farm fuel center after any in-store purchase. Fleet Farm is built for every season. Fleet Farm. Built for real life. The Dish Voice Remote just got even more powerful. Uh, Why'd we put so much technology in there? You don't think I've watched a lot of football? You want to put a little wager on it? Bet. So you can settle that bet without ever taking your eyes off the game. How many D1 football teams are there? Oh! What you do with that power? Oh, it's gotta hurt. Well, that Woo, is right. totally up to you. Don't look so sad, man. Come on, we're having fun. New Dish Voice Remote with the Google Assistant. Dish, tuned in to you. It's a secret nearly a century old, a mystery they'll have to literally dig up. When my dad was in the hospital reminiscing, he was trying to convince Larry that it was whiskey buried. Feds raided the wrong farm east of them. The house would have been where the distilling would have occurred. What uncovering the legendary rye barrels could mean. The only barrel of 90-year-old spirits in the world. See what these whiskey makers actually find. I think about it, I get chills. It's Legendary Find Wednesday on Local 5 News at 10. Welcome back. National politics took center stage in Iowa last weekend at the Liberty and Justice Celebration in downtown Des Moines, bringing the top contenders for the Democratic presidential nomination and thousands, 13,000 Democratic supporters all to Wells Fargo Arena. It was the largest party event before the Iowa caucus in February. It was a chance for the candidates to shine. But in a shocking turn of events, less than two hours before the event began, after his team set up signs around Wells Fargo Arena and supporters came in from across the country, rallying as early as 4 a.m., Beto O'Rourke announced he was dropping out of the race. And with a little more than an hour before the event, he held a press conference. Emotions were high, there were tears, but Beto encouraged his supporters to rally behind the eventual nominee. Inside Wells Fargo Arena, Mayor Pete Buttigieg from South Bend, Indiana, was the first candidate to speak. He had the largest crowd in the room. As he continues to rise in the national and Iowa polls, his focus is winning the Hawkeye State and unifying the country, if the nominee appealing to, be, to a broad spectrum of voters. But I didn't just come here to end the era of Donald Trump. I'm here to launch the era that must come next. Because in order to win and in order to lead, it's going to take a lot more than the political warfare we've come to accept from Washington, D.C. Senator Elizabeth Warren, the frontrunner in many polls, making a clear division in the field, slamming the more moderate Democrats like Mayor Pete and former VP Joe Biden for their vague ideas that are designed not to, quote, offend anyone. If the most we can promise is business as usual after Donald Trump, then Democrats will lose. We win when we offer solutions big enough to touch the problems that are in people's lives. Now, VP, former VP Joe Biden came out the gate with a great lead, but the top of the field has become rather crowded, and he's fighting to maintain his status. He still believes he is the candidate who can beat Trump. The very character of America is on the ballot next November. The very character of the country. And Donald Trump is a genuine threat, a man lacking in the character we need. We'll take a short break, but up next, we give you in-depth analysis. What are the implications of this big event? Your water softener needs salt. You buy it, lug it, pour it over and over. Save salt and the hassle with a Culligan high-efficiency water softener. The world's best. Click or call Culligan Water and start saving today. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore. Fall is upon us and fireplace season is here, and you need a new heat and glow gas fireplace insert. They're the perfect thing to make that old wood fireplace more beautiful, warmer, and easier to use. And right now, heat and glow is giving a $200 rebate, making it even easier for you to upgrade that old fireplace. Please come see them today. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale. I know people love the Dish Remote. It's great. So why build in a Google Assistant? I mean, who really needs a TV remote that can turn the thermostat up? Change temperature to 72. The lights down. Dimming lights. 
and still access their DVR. Actually, some people could absolutely use a remote like that. The new Dish Voice Remote. Dish, tuned in to you. On a night of record-breaking voting. More than 359,000 ballots were cast. Local 5 was first to bring you election results. Courtney Clark, the new mayor of Lockheed with 60% of the vote. Dedicating more reporters. This is the fifth time he has run for mayor. Tell me about your emotions. Because the outcomes affect you. The Moines mayoral race is heading to a runoff. Election night and every night. Local politics live on Local 5. On air and online. With millions affected by autism. She wasn't speaking. I didn't want to help her. Could an experimental treatment be the breakthrough parents have been desperate for? The second day of treatment were the first words I heard from my daughter. New Doctors. Monday at 3 on Local 5. You're watching This Week in Iowa. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Iowa. Welcome back, everyone. We are still with Pat Reiner, breaking down the LJ dinner. Uh, Pat, what were your biggest takeaways? You were there with your whole team. Sure. Uh, yeah, quite a few. Um, now, I mean, it was, it's the biggest event uh, yet of the Democratic cycle. It's gonna, probably going to be the biggest one until the caucus. And what we saw were campaigns come to show that uh, they were serious. And Warren and Buttigieg uh, both had by far the largest yes. uh, groups there. Buttigieg actually had the largest of all. Very loud, very excited. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's not nothing. You can buy up all the tickets, but it's another thing to get people from all over Iowa to actually drive in and cheer for your candidate. And so it, it solidified what a lot of us have been seeing on the ground here, that forget about the national polls where Biden's still leading. Here in Iowa, it's between Warren and Buttigieg with Sanders and Biden close behind. Okay, so talk to me about Sanders and Biden's crowd, though, because Sanders didn't have anyone yeah. inside, and Biden had just one section. Right, so Sanders is doing what he's been doing for a lot of the cycle, which is is he is focused on the far left in the party and does not try to reach out too much to the broader party. They had an event elsewhere. Their whole thing is turnout, 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 bringing new people, first time caucus goers out to the polls. And, uh, you know, we'll see if that works or not on caucus night. It's one of those real, you know, unpredictable, who knows what's going to happen kind of things. And uh, hard to register in polls, too. It, it is. Never it's, voted it, it is. It very much is. Um, and then Joe Biden, uh, he, he had a lot of sections that they bought, but they're not bring in as many folks, uh, which is disconcerting, uh, I would think, to their Iowa operation, that uh, he, he certainly seems to be struggling in the state. Uh, he has been more resilient than I think a lot of folks have given him credit for. Uh, but overall, there seems to be some troubling signs that uh, they're not going in the direction that you would want them to. What was your reaction to Beto dropping out True. right before the event started? Yeah, I don't think that went over some too well with some of the staff and some of the volunteers that had yeah. flown in for that. Uh, it's one of those things where... Uh, you know, when you run out of money, you run out of money, I guess. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see if we uh, see several more uh, folks drop out before that was caucus. That's going to be my next question. Yeah, for caucus you. night, because some of these people are just running really low on money, and everybody staffed up this year like it was going to be a normal year, and it, it's not. There, I mean, we still have over a dozen candidates in the race, and it's splitting the money up uh, all different ways. Right. Who do you see as being the next to drop out? Uh, I mean, Castro has uh, reduced his staff in some other states, and I, I think, uh, you know, that's one to look at. Okay. Um, what do you want people at home to understand when they see massive events like this happening in Iowa? I mean, overall, I, I think it's good for the Democratic Party here in the state to show all this excitement and enthusiasm. It was a huge it was production. Well, and, and I, was, I was reading back in a story that the 2007 JJ dinner, the big Obama breakout right. thing, like I thought that was huge. That was seven or 8,000. This was 13,000 right. people. Um, so, you know, people are engaged in a huge way. Do you think that all of these people are engaged, though, because there are so many candidates? Yeah, it, it could be, and, and I think that's part of the reason why you're going to see such a big uh, turnout on caucus night, you know, well over 300,000 would be my guess, which would shatter the record, uh, because you have so many different candidates who pull from different parts of the electorate. So, uh, diff you know, different candidates are bringing in different new groups uh, of people who really like them. So looking ahead to February, if you think that it's down really to Warren and Buttigieg for the top two, what does that look like for winning caucus night? Because they do sure. bring completely different crowds. Uh, they, they do to a certain extent. I mean, both of them are, I think, are doing well at building out a broader coalition in the party. Like, it's not just all former Bernie people or former Hillary 
people, which, which you might see with Sanders and Biden. Uh, and, and I would also note, we are we do still have three months to go, so you know, Bougie <laughs> is going to yeah. is going to rise up here, but then that means attacks are more focused on him. Uh -huh. uh, but but overall. Uh, you know, there, there could be a couple more twists and turns. I wouldn't be surprised if someone else starts to to move up and get some momentum if Biden continues to decline. And I think we'll be looking between Klobuchar, Harris, and Booker for that. Okay, very interesting. Yeah. Kl Klobuchar, Harris, and Booker. Klobuchar had quite the yeah. turnout. And Harris, you know, she took up two full sections. Yeah. That was a rowdy group. She had people in from Chicago. She had people from all over the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, uh, you know, a number of these senators are, are have large operations in the state and seem to have uh, you know, excitement. Um, the, the one thing that's going to be interesting, though, as impeachment moves on, if we end up having a trial in the Senate, which it kind of looks like we might, that could happen in January. Senators are not allowed to leave. I think, I think they got to be there six days out of the week. So all these senators could be stuck in D.C. The only people who aren't are Buttigieg, Biden, like Andrew Yang and Tom Steyer. And Buttigieg is the one who's shown that he will go barnstorm across the state a lot. Okay, well, that would really yeah. put a wrench in things. <laughs> yes, Pat, it would. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate the conversation as always. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Panera's new warm green bowls are full of good. Full of flavor. Color. Full of... Full of good. So you can be too. Oh my God. Try our new warm grain balls today. Order now on Uber Eats. Should a president pressure a foreign leader to intervene in our elections? I could have. I think it would probably, possibly have been okay if I did. He swore an oath to protect our democracy, but ask his lawyer. So you did ask Ukraine to look into Joe Biden? Of course I did. Now his chief of staff says, get over it. Tell Senator Ernst it's time to put country over party. Need to impeach is responsible for the content of this advertising. Are you talking to me? Crossroads Shooting Sports is proud to honor our heroes this Veterans Day. At 28, I had struggled with opiate and meth addiction for 12 years. I lost everything, and I still thought I was in control. I did and said things that the sober me never would have done. And one day I realized I was not invincible. I was not exempt. And that's when a friend told me about elite rehab placement. They found me a program that fit my needs. It was a small enough program that I could get that one-on-one -on -one attention and they gave me the tools I needed to get sober and stay sober. And now, I work for a rehab specialist. I'm the guy on the other end of the phone helping people who are just like me. And it's an honor to be able to give that gift back. And all it took was the one phone call. so much for joining us here on This Week in Iowa. We hope to see you again next Sunday and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend.